Hi everyone, my name is Gretchen and I'm an OpenSciad teacher, writer, and facilitator. I'll be sharing with you a summary of lesson two in the chemical reactions unit. We'll be going through this two day lesson, including what happens beforehand, so you know how we got to this point, as well as the gist of this lesson, including key moments and some tips and tricks regarding materials management. Our first steps will be to see how we actually got here to lesson two. So let's dig in. In lesson one, your class will have had the opportunity to see a store-bought bath bomb submerged in water, created an initial model to explain how the gas bubbles appeared after it was put in water, and as you attempted to come to consensus, students realized that they have lots of questions about how those gas bubbles got there. Like, are they actually inside the bath bomb? So as we move into lesson two, our first steps will be to see this lesson at a glance, like what you will actually do with students and what you should all accomplish by the end. These are big deals. So please know that lesson two is a two-day lesson. There are two investigations, one demoed by you, uh, the teacher, and then the other is performed by students. Both require you to prepare some materials ahead of time, which we will address later on in this video. Day one of this two-day lesson first focuses on looking at the bath bombs up close. Since many students will have asked questions about the whereabouts of the gas in the bath bomb, you'll push for students to consider scale, using hand lenses to see empty spaces where the gas could have originated from. You'll also review what students should already know about gases from earlier grades, and use this evidence to plan and carry out an investigation with a closed system, in this case, a Ziploc baggie. From these dem this demonstration, students will determine that the bath bomb gas is not trapped inside the bath bomb. And from here, students will want to test the bath bomb in another closed system, but this time with water, one of the original materials. Because students know that gases have mass and that mass in a closed system shouldn't change, you will push for the use of scale of a scale to determine the source of the bath bomb gas. Day two of this two-day lesson focuses on sense making and creating an argument. They will use the data they collected from the bottle investigation, along with the key model ideas to argue that the gas bubbles don't come from inside the bath bomb, but rather from an interaction between the bath bomb and water. They'll use key model ideas as their scientific reasoning in their argument. So from those two days, it's important to know exactly what students should be figuring out. From day one, students will figure out that the gas isn't trapped inside the bath bomb. And from day two, they'll figure out that the gas must come from an interaction between the bath bomb and water, which basically means that whatever the bath bomb and water are made of, and it's okay to remind students that these things are made of matter and that matter is made of particles, that they must have changed somehow because of our use of a closed system. Okay, so now that we know how we've gotten here and what we should expect to accomplish, but... Let's consider the key moments when you're like, wait, what do I really need to make sure the kids grasp and hold on to to actually move our science thinking forward? Okay, so let's actually remember that kids are going to be adamant that the gas is trapped inside those empty spaces. And they'll especially think this when they look at the bath bomb up close with hand lenses. So you're going to help them plan for the bath bomb or baggy investigation that if indeed that gas is trapped inside the bath bomb, and if you crush those bath bombs inside a closed system of the Ziploc bag, well, what are the kids going to say? They're going to say, oh, well, duh, yeah, the bag must blow up, right? Inflate. And then if we're going to use a scale, oh, well, then the weight shouldn't change because we had a closed system, right? So you're going to push for these things with students. So when you actually demo those things with students, neither of these things happen. And it's a big like wah, wah, like moment with kids, but that's okay. Because even though the bag doesn't inflate when the bath bombs are crushed and the math mass doesn't go down um, in that closed system, okay, when you open the bag, like all of these pieces of evidence will go against the claim that students have been proposing that the gas is coming from inside the bath bombs. And so what is, does this key moment tell us? It actually is that the gas must come from an interaction with water. And the students will ask to do this in the next part of the lesson. So this actually leads us into day two of lesson two, and you'll be thinking about an important cross-cutting concept um, here of cause and effect, um, along with ideas about matter in closed and open systems. And through the development of a poster with possible claims, students will think about what the evidence would suggest if any of those things happened. So from here, we'll create the plan to have students do this investigation in their groups with bath bombs, water, 
closed and open systems, and also digital skills. And please make sure at this moment that you've got Google goggles to protect everyone's eyes. So as students share data from their group investigations, it will be clear that the gas is made. Um, and I love this part, like kids will like see the bubbles, but then they're gonna feel it too when the materials are combined, okay? Kids will literally like yell, oh my gosh, the bottle isn't squishy anymore, it got hard, right? And so they'll also see that the mask doesn't change before or after max mixing the bath bombs and water together, meaning it has to have come from an interaction. And when they go to open the bottles, I also love this part, um, you're gonna hear the excitement and lots of comments like, I heard it fizz, hey, it sounds like a can of soda opening right? And then when they go to use the scales here, after the bottle's been opened, they'll actually see that the mass did change when the bottle was opened, meaning the gas left. Um, and because the gas appeared only when the bath bombs and water interacted, uh, the gas had to have come from an interaction in this closed system, and it was not there before. So as students work to write an argument, um, which is the last key moment of this lesson, um, this is where scaffolding has to come in because they're going to use where they got their evidence from, again, the demonstration and the investigation, along with their key model ideas. Those are the scientific truths, which are always, always true. And this is going to be really important. Um, I find that writing an argument is hard for any kid, doesn't matter who they are. And so guiding them through this process is going to be really, really key. So now I'm gonna to get to the part where we think about material management and tips and tricks for this particular lesson. So first off, regarding your word wall, there's no new words introduced in this lesson, so you don't have to prepare anything for this. But you are gonna to have to make some posters. And um, I just find that um, for each section that you teach, um, sometimes you might wanna do this digitally. And so this helps reduce the load, um, especially if you have minimal space in your classroom. Or sometimes I just make one copy and put it under the document camera and I cover up sections um, to reveal things so I don't have to draw everything live with students. Um, I also do find that the key model ideas are going to be referenced a lot throughout this unit as there's various arguments that students have to write. And so I give students a copy of these to paste into their notebooks. Um, I do even color code them. So this is an easy thing for students to always find. And in this case, throughout the video, I shared with you uh, pictures of mine, which are done digitally um, and also on green. Makes it easy for them to find in their notebooks when students get a copy. One of the other things we need to consider is the management of the actual materials in this lesson, since it's hands on. So I don't have the kits. And so I've tried to piecemeal everything together at my school. So I actually try to collect as many empty plastic bottles for this lesson I can ahead of time. Um, I try to have enough for every single group in every section that I teach. So I am not washing bottles at the end of the lesson. Um, and please know that you can have issues with the data collection of the mass. If there's water left on the outside of the bottle and kids haven't dried them appropriately, um, it tends to be confusing for kids. And so this is where I try to be ahead of the game, I actually asked my custodial staff to go through recycling bins in my school and save these empty bottles for me. Um, please know that regarding um, materials management, kids have issues with digital skills. They may have never used them before, um, and their number sense um, may not be as strong as you would like. And so students make mistakes because they don't know how to use the tear feature, or there's some rounding issues where um, because your scales may only go to like a tenth of a gram, um, the scale may round and tell you a number that's actually like with rounding error um, doesn't give you accurate results. So these are really great teachable moments for students that you'll need to consider should these events arise in your classroom. So as we close lesson two, kids will know that the gas is created from an interaction between the bath bomb and the water. Um, they know, they will know that it does not come from inside the bath bombs. And so they know that it's going to be a natural progression to figure out, well, wait, if it comes because of an interaction between the bath bomb and the water, like what's in bath bombs anyway? And this is actually what you're going to do in lesson three. And kids get super excited about this to see like, hey, what are the ingredients in the bath bombs? And what happens if I do mix each of those ingredients with water? And kids are just so excited to begin this testing process with each of the ingredients. Um, so happy teaching. I hope you've enjoyed it.